Amen. Let's get into the word. Uh, Today's message is going to come from the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 11. Again, that is the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. Uh, Romans is found in your New Testament um, of the Bible, uh, right after Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Uh, There are many translations of God's word. Uh, Today, I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. Amen. Uh, Let's see what it has to say for us today. Hear ye the word of the Lord. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will also certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died to sin once and for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me, please. O Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is great and greatly to be praised. We thank you for this opportunity to gather once again in your name and learn about Jesus Christ. God, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Hide me behind your cross so that people don't see me, but they see Jesus. And if there is anybody that wants to know Christ Jesus in the pardoning of their sins, they'll ask, what must I do to become saved? It is in your darling son, Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, For the time that we get to spend together today, I'd like to talk a little bit about wanted, dead, and alive. Wanted, dead, and alive. Dead and alive. That is not a typo. I know many may be familiar with the phrase from old Western movies where they'd have the posters up and some criminal's picture in the middle of the poster and it would say wanted, dead, or alive. Uh, Some might even go to the point and say wanted, preferably dead. But this is wanted, dead, and alive alive. Uh, A phrase I say often uh, in my life is, uh, this is not an either or situation, but a both and. I see conditions that are not just black and white, but sometimes gray. Uh, I listen to a gospel album often where there's an interlude in the gospel album and a bishop gets up to talk and he talks about his granddaughter and he talks about how his granddaughter Uh, will say, my head is hurting. 
And the bishop tells the granddaughter, hey, don't don't say your head is hurting. Say, I believe I'm healed, you know, speak it into existence. And the granddaughter in childlike fashion says, I believe I'm healed, but my head is still hurting. It is like that in the kingdom of God. Uh, little known fact, but in order to get commissioned in the United Methodist Church, uh, you have to go through several interviews. And in some of those interviews, you get questioned, whether it's a commissioning interview or an ordination interview, about the kingdom of God. And they look for buzzwords. I'm not supposed to say that out loud, but uh, yeah, they look, they want to hear certain buzzwords in your interview. And one of the buzzwords they want to hear when you talk about the kingdom of God is that the kingdom of God is already and not yet. It is already here because of Christ's work on the cross. But the kingdom of God is not yet because Christ has not returned yet. Already and not yet. Not either or, but rather both and. The new age has come, but the old age has not yet gone. Uh, and that's the already and not yet when you want to be dead to sin and alive in Christ. Paul is, ta is describing a both and situation in Romans chapter six, when he wants believers to be dead to sin and alive in Christ. So Paul is letting the people know that they are on their own wanted poster uh, for many reasons. Uh, for the early church, it's both a symbolic and a literal wanted. Uh, they, it is true that they are wanted when Paul is writing this first letter to the church at Rome because the believers, uh, they, they are in here having a religion that is opposed to the Roman government. Uh, Rome is re very clear that you have no king except Caesar, and these people are worshiping the king of kings and the lord of lords, and so many early believers were followed, harassed, imprisoned, even executed, and, and some of those adventures uh, and, and, and stories are, are covered in the book of Acts, and uh, the occasional reference is made by Paul in some of his letters, but if you identified, they didn't call it Christianity back then, they called it the way, but if you were a follower, follower of the way, you could become a wanted man or woman. It was risky business. But the author of the text also says that not only are they wanted because they are being persecuted for their faith, but they're wanted in another sense, a symbolic and spiritual one. God wants us in so many ways. God wants us to walk in the spirit, to be unceasing in our prayer life, to be holy and to enshrine our daily lives in the fruits of the spirit. God wants us to love the Lord with all our heart and all our minds and all our souls. God wants us to love our neighbors as as ourselves. God wants us to do these things. And Paul focuses on this aspect of being wanted. And being wanted and a believer uh, uh, and being a follower of Jesus means that we're to be wanted, dead, and alive. Uh, and he explains what he means. Uh, he doesn't just say that he wants us dead and alive uh, as a phrase, but that comes from the paragraph that I read. Uh, the root of it is embedded in, in, in uh, the great Pauline metaphor, and it's really not just in chapter six, but really chapters five through eight. And, and it begins with the crucifixion of Jesus and ends with his resurrection with a burial in between. Paul says that when we were crucified, or when, when Jesus was crucified, rather, we were crucified with him. So that's one way we're dead. But when Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, we're also raised with him, so we're alive. Dead to sin in our old fallen human nature and alive in new life in Christ. Both and, not either or. In between, there is a burial. Uh, Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. When we are baptized, that symbolizes the burial. We go down into the waters and come out revived, more than just wet. We come out with new resurrection and life. And so Paul is telling us uh, that he's arguing that we need to start acting 
like we are dead to sin and not alive to it. Paul says that we should remember uh, that our sinful practices and habits no longer should have a hold on us. We are saved from the penalty, the power, and the presence of sin, and we should not forget uh, that Christ has broken the chains bound to us of our former life. We are dead to that past. It is gone. Uh, 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 the baptized cannot remain in sin. The initiated cannot remain in sin. Uh, just because the just because Jesus has the power to make things right, does not invite us to continue to do wrong. Uh, we are saved by grace, but that is not an infinite "do what you want" card. Uh, when the text starts off in verse uh, uh, chapter six, verse one, uh, where he says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Uh, by no means, it says in verse two. Uh, one of the funny things that I, I remember in my seminary education and when I get into the Greek, uh, uh, two things that that uh, I, I thought were funny is that every time you see the word rubbish in a King James Bible uh, mentioned by the Apostle Paul, just know he was talking about fertilizer. Uh, when you broke down the Greek, he was talking about uh, manure of a uh, of a bovine nature. Whenever you see rubbish in the Bible and, and then whenever you see by no means in the Bible, uh, the Greek is saying that is the strongest no that you can put on something. And I'll let you use your mind to figure out what kind of article or preposition went in front of the no when you saw no means. You see, Paul, uh, uh, this baptism is not a mere symbol of active initiation, but a realistic association between be, uh, being uh, the human being in Jesus Christ and his death and burial and resurrection. He took this initiation seriously. He took the fact that Jesus Christ hung, bled, and died for our sins and got up on the third day seriously. And so he did not want us to not act like we were alive in Christ. Uh, death has no power over Christ, the text says, now that he's been raised from the dead. And so being dead to sin also means that we don't need to be dead Christians. Mm, mm. Uh, you know, dead Christians are often the walking embodiment of negativity. They seem to be against change and, and opposed to positive thing. Spiritually dead Christians have no interest in helping others. No one's going to mistake a spiritually dead Christian for a Red Cross volunteer or a Meals on Wheels driver. Dead Christians or any dead or any dead person, period, does not react to external stimuli. They don't just seem responsive on the spiritual side of nature. Uh, no one thinks of them as alive in the spirit because the vital functions have ceased. Uh, dead Christians seem to just go through the motions like the routine of a rat in a rut. They live by checking off the boxes and doing what is required and nothing more. And so Paul is saying we need to be dead to sin, but don't be a dead Christian. Uh, he says to walk in the newness of life, not think about it, not hold a committee meeting about it, not listen to a lecture and not do anything about it. He says to walk in the newness of life. Uh, I was studying for this message and I came across a story. Uh, someone was talking about their cousin that was going to med school and he learned uh, that the, the, the cousin that was going to med school, they told them to start calling themselves doctor from day one call themselves doctor for day one because they are in the middle, but they need to be able to operate and act like and hold the job seriously as a doctor. And so they say to instruct them to call them as doctors on the first day so that they can walk in their position. They can operate in what they are doing. And so don't just think about it or talk about it. Be that. And, and, and slavery to sin is death. 
but being attached to righteousness is sanctification. And so we can flip uh, or reverse the symptoms of the dead Christians to discover what it means to be alive in Christ. You see, to be alive in Christ, uh, uh, those Christians are generally positive and unafraid of change. In that sense, many would say they're progressive or dynamic and not static. Rather than loving themselves, they'll love others. Rather than promoting self-interest, they'll lift up the concerns of others. The Great Commission energizes them and, and seeks the, helps them to seek to fulfill their mission, seeing it as a God-provided opportunity to serve God and others. Alive in Christ, persons are susceptible to their spiritual nature and intentional about their study and their prayer time. Alive in Christ, persons like Jesus don't hold grudges or are hard to offend. Uh, alive in Christ, persons like the Apostle James, when facing trials of any time, kind, rather, consider it nothing but joy because they know that the testing produces endurance. Uh, uh, the testing of their faith produces endurance, and they let endurance have its full effect so that they may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. In other words, they're mature and they're willing to do the heavy lifting and do it without a bunch of whining. Alive in Christ, Christians are people of faith, hope, and love, and alive in Christ. Christians are people of utter integrity and people whom you trust your own life with or that of your children. And so Paul wants us to be not either or, but both and dead to sin and alive in Christ. Uh, you know, I've, I've read that that um, children are, you know, they get half uh, 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 of their genetic material from both uh, both parents. Right. Uh, some people argue it's 50 50. Some people say it might be 51 49, uh, whatever, whatever. But it, it, it's, it's half. And so I think about that both and, and and the half when I think about Jesus, who was uh, both fully divine and fully human. Uh, I, I remember uh, a story about him uh, at any given time, right, uh, he, he was away from the family and he was in the synagogue, the text says, listening and, and asking questions. And he was preparing himself for the ministry. So he was walking in the divine purpose. But when his mama had missed him for a couple days and went back to get him, said, boy, come on, he went with them fully human and fully divine, right? He went to a party and was partying with the people at the wedding. And then they, they told him, we run out of wine. And so he said, I, it's not my time yet. He didn't want to do what he was asked to do, uh, 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 being human, right? But then said, okay, fine, give me the, uh, the, 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 the vases of water. And he turned it into wine. That was the divine. I, I remember a story uh, going on where he, he said uh, uh, they, they didn't have, he was talking to some people and they, the people were hungry and he didn't have food on him. And so there was something about uh, being human there because, you know, people get hungry, but they took uh, 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 some fish and some loaves of bread and were able to feed thousands. So there was the human side and the divine side. I, I'm reminded of a story as well where Jesus was sitting on a boat and the storm was raging and he was sleeping. God don't sleep. But they woke him up saying, Master, perish, uh, uh, carest thou not that we perish. And he woke up and spoke to the storm and said, peace be still. And it was still. So there was the divine. So he was fully human and, and, and fully divine. And he was fully human. And when he took our place and was beaten and put a crown of thorns on his head and blindfolded and punched. And they said, prophesy, Jesus, tell us which one of us hit you. Uh, he was human when he said, Father, why have y'all forsaken me? He was human when, when everything was going on. He was human when they put him in a borrowed tomb. But three days later, the earth shook, the stone rolled away, and the tomb was empty, both human and divine. And that same power that was in him is the same power that allows us all to be dead to sin and alive in Christ.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church are open and we invite you to come. Pray with me, please. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is great and greatly to be praised. We thank you for the word that went forth, for those who heard it and those who will hear it later. That if there is anybody that desires to know Christ Jesus in the pardoning of their sins, they'll ask, what must I do to become saved? Lord God, we ask that your Holy Spirit spread this word to your holy people, for your holy church, in your holy kingdom. Let this be a seed that is planted in soil and produces a, a great harvest, 30, 60, 100 fold. It is in your darling son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to connect with me on social media, Pastor Johnny Simpson Jr. on Facebook, at Pastor J. Simpson Jr. on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks again for watching and God bless.